Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for a very special market recap. And if you're interested in any of the services I provide, make sure to check the links in the description below for both the Patreon and Discord. And if you're interested in joining the Discord during this month of November, even though it is the last week, we are still in the free trial for the swing trade service so make sure you hop on in the trades have been absolutely great for both stocks and crypto we have had not we have had not one loser in either and i do think this last week in november we potentially may be able to close out some more in the green so if you have not been in the swing trade service and you want to check it out this is the best time to do it and this is your last week for the free trial in this month so make sure to join the discord and if you like the content, make sure to give me a like and subscribe. It really goes far. I really appreciate it. And now, let's get into this very special market recap. Now, why is this special? Because the news, guys, the news coming is going to be big. It's really going to define how we close out the year and pretty much all of Q1 of 2023. So if you've been following me for any sort of time, you know I've been you know, saying over and over, I really am in the camp of a bullish Q4. And overall, I would say it's been fairly on my side, though crypto has lagged mainly due to what happened with FTX. But if you look at the indices, you look at the stock market overall, it's been pretty strong in November. We've had some nice rises on the dollar breaking down. And we've had a lot of nice stocks making some nice moves up. Both risk on and risk off assets have shown some really nice bullish activity in this beginning of Q4. However, if we're gonna sustain this sort of upward trajectory, the next couple days, mainly from the 29th all the way to December 2nd, is really going to define it, okay? So looking at what's going on November 29th, we have the consumer confidence numbers coming out for the U.S. This is going to be fairly big because it's, this is right after uh, you know, uh, you know, Cyber Monday. So we're going to get a good idea of how the consumers feel if they come out overly negative, you know, under the forecast of 100. That could spell some doom and gloom for December, and, you know, that's going to add some 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 significant uh weight uh on the potential of a bullish december though it won't really break it now november 30th though it's going to be very very important now we're going to be getting the employment change so this is going to be a big deal because if we start showing signs that less people are working as we're going in to december and really as we go into heavier winter months that's going to be a really bad look and it's going to cause a lot of fear for not just you know your your you know your wants but your needs so the products that you'll need if there's not enough employment to make sure that that part of the market that part of the sector is working optimally in the coldest months uh that's when fear really starts to hit and this can have major major effects on the stock market going forward and then we have the quarter over quarter the gdp for the us is also going to be huge um you know if if this comes out to be extremely under forecast i think you're going to see massive massive sell-off though i do not believe that's what's going to happen they've been pretty on point with the Q, uh, quarter over quarter estimates for the gdp it's probably going to be around forecast potentially a little bit higher i do think at the close of q3 and the beginning of q4 we did have some nice spikes in activity for the economy. So we should see this either meet the forecast or slightly pass it, okay? And continue that trend, continue that trend. Because as you can see, previously we ended up reporting 2.6. Now they're thinking 2.7. I actually think we can get to 2.8, but again, we'll have to wait uh, on the 30th to get that confirmed. And then the next one's going to be crude oil inventories is going to be fairly important as well, though that's going to be more, um, I would say, insulated into the oil markets. But that could have some adverse effects into the stock market and some risk on assets, depending on you know if the numbers are really, really uh, shocking. But I would say it's mostly going to focus on the oil markets. And then this is going to be a big, big deal on the 30th, which is Fed. Fed Powell will be speaking. So depending on what he talks about, how he talks, can really start shaking the markets at least, you know, as we go into December 1st. So watch out for in the afternoon on the 30th of November, Jerome Powell will speak. And uh, that's going to be a very, very important event on that day. 
<clears throat> then December 1st, another very important day, uh, uh, day, we have the OPEC meetings. We also have the year over year price index. Uh, we have the initial jobless claims. So, you know, kind of going hand in hand with the employment claims. We don't want to see this extremely, you know, increase extremely, right? This this can't increase that extremely. It actually has been increasing the jobless claims since last month. So, you know, ideally, if you want to see some more upside, you know, that's going to be prolonged into Q, Q1 of 2023. You want to see this show signs of slowing down and uh, that people are actually getting back to work and there are less jobless people. So got to be very careful with this number here. And then consumer spending month over month is going to be massive this time around because of you know what, what was going on for the holidays in November. So this month uh, for December, uh, you know, as it reports November's uh, uh, spending, it's going to be huge. And then when we go into January and we do the next consumer spending month over month, that's going to be even bigger, you know, as you do for the spending for the holidays like Christmas. So this is going to be a big, big couple months for consumer spending. So the next two months, uh, you know, one we're reporting now in November and then the next one that's going to be reporting on December, it's going to be huge. So watch for these two jobless claims and the consumer spending uh, numbers to come out. They're coming out at the exact same time, 8.30 in the morning, uh, Eastern Time U.S., December 1st. This is going to shake the markets, good or bad. Uh, then we have the PMIs for the manufacturing, which is very, very important to keep note of because they're forward looking. So, you know, depending on how these PMI numbers come out, they should give us a bit of a hint of what we can expect CPI wise for next month. So uh, another another thing you want to keep eye, keep our eye out on. It's uh, that's coming out 945 and 10 a.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern Time as well. So it's going to be all in the morning around, uh, you know, New York Open and then around the U.S. stock market open. So, <clears throat> you know, keep your eye for this. Uh, this shouldn't shake the markets too much, especially since it's going to be coming off the heels of the jobless claims and the uh, consumer spending month over month. Those will have much bigger effects on the futures. Unless these numbers are absolutely catastrophic or absolutely extraordinary, um, then it shouldn't really shake the markets too much because they'll probably be getting shaken uh, whether it's good or bad from the jobless claims and the consumer spending. Now, December 2nd is going to be another massive day, and this is really the, the last massive day of what's coming next week. Uh, the unemployment rate is going to come out. The U.S. unemployment rate comes out. Uh, that's going to be huge, right? And then you got the non -farm, the U.S. non-farm payrolls, another huge uh, data set coming out. And then the average earnings year over year, these three all coming out at 8.30 a.m., December 2nd, U.S. Eastern Time. This will shake the markets and all these days all together will really define what kind of month we're going to be looking at. You know, are we going to be looking at a bearish uh, December or are we going to get a bullish December to close out the year? We're going to get that Santa Claus rally, right? Because we've actually had a rally. We're going to go over some of the charts, but are we going to get that real continued move higher? And as Jerome Powell speaks, remember, he's going to be speaking on the 30th. How is he going to come out? Is he going to be dovish? Is he going to be hawkish? Is he going to start showing signs of pivoting from their current policies? Or is he going to stand firm? Because if he stands firm and he comes out hawkish, the markets will have negative effects. And honestly, it's probably going to really overbear on any positive news that comes out after it, right? So if he's saying, no, you know, the Fed's going to do this and we're going to get the 2% uh, interest rates, we're, we're not going to move, we're not going to buckle, we're okay with the markets going down. We're okay with the stock market slowing down. We're okay with the economy slowing down. We're okay with recession. All this stuff, then you're going to see that no matter what comes out from this news down here, all this important news, you might get spikes up if it's really good news, that the Fed is going to hold their stance will really define the rest of the year and pretty much all of Q1 2023. But if they do show those signs of softening, you know, of dovish, dovish outlook and really just thinking about pivoting, then you're really going to get some really, really nice bullish activity going forward. So we got a big, big week coming up. It's very, very exciting. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it. But after this week, that's about it. I mean, the next major news that we have on the books is the OPEC monthly report, which, again, you know, that's going to be it usually is more insulated uh, towards the the uh, oil markets. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, First, this first week is going to be absolutely volatile and very exciting. And uh, hopefully there's a lot of opportunities for us to get uh, good deals and also potentially, you know, bank on our good trades. All right. So now let's get into the charts. Let's take a look at the Dixie. So futures will be opening up in a couple hours, but 
as of now what can we see from the dixie chart so so far you know traded within the blue zone had a nice little move up like i said it probably would as it came towards 108 i was saying you know make sure to watch out for that reversal down because yes it was possible for it to come higher to maybe test this larger structure it broke bearish but once you get towards the 108 zone we, on this little wick then you're you're good to go to have the pull the the push back down and that's exactly what happened we actually came down we're trying to test out this low wick here but so far we've held strong we've had a nice little buy doji here so we may see another rally up now is it going to lead to a higher high from this swing high here i actually don't think so i think what we may be seeing here is actually a bullish structure being made on the dixie now this bullish structure likely will lead to more downside now this is also assuming that the, the the futures don't just gap down off of like really really bullish news and bearish news for the dollar but if we're gonna fairly trade stably uh as we come into the 29th of, of november watch for a move to make a high a lower high and then another move to challenge this low and then make a new lower low coming into this major support zone of about 104.88 and potentially lower to 102. So once we get towards this low, this zone down here, taking out the liquidity under this level here, you're probably going to see what kind of my original doodle that was sitting on the chart is kind of indicating. You'll come into this level, start kind of having a bullish consolidation and then breaking out to the upside to challenge you know higher levels and, and eventually break down again because on the macro i think we are going to come down all the way to this ascending trend line eventually which depending on when we drop how fast we drop can be anywhere from 100 to about 102 ish so i do think there's more downside but we are gearing up for some minor upside potentially to build out this larger uh bullish structure that kind of consolidates into this level and then start the, a, a smaller bullish structure within it and then breaking out. So that's kind of my vision right now. Of course, we could just start trending down again, streaming down, and then get towards this ascending trend line and then start consolidating there. That's definitely possible as well. But right now, going by what the price action is showing me, it's not showing me uh, you know, any evidence that we're going to just break lower. It looks like it's going to consolidate a little bit before we have our decision. And right now, the consolidation, though early, does have a slight tinge bullish all right now let's take a quick look at the dow s p and nasdaq so looking at the dow and this to me also gives me some evidence that we are going to see a little bit of upside on the dollar because we're trading within this bearish feg so this fair value gap on the on the on the dow we've already broken past this high pivot here so this swing high so a lot of liquidity that might have been sitting above this level level is starting to get tapped into so a pullback would make some sense into these bullish fair value gaps down here so right here is a very very close one to price and we have this one here that this one here would probably have it get filled completely taking out the liquidity under this wick down here and then potentially moving up higher in my opinion if we did break this low look for a lower high from this potential high or a little bit higher and then another breakdown again and kind of of a larger bullish consolidation and technically it can come all the way down to this low fair value gap down here and still be bullish and if it were to do that i mean then you're looking at a much larger structure that is going to have potentially an inverse sort of look to it now i don't like drawing out an inverse head and shoulder from a, a move like this it's not actually correct because i do want to say this you know you have to remember inverse head and shoulders head and shoulders those are usually topping and bottoming structures from a trend okay so this yes we did have a break from the uptrend right as we're coming down but this isn't really relatively a low i would call all right this doesn't look like an actual low uh, you know, to me, this would be more of a bullish sort of structure on the macro. You have the break from this uh, from this very volatile uptrend here, and then you're having a a downward consolidation down. And technically, we may even have begun to break out from that to come back and test the top side of it. Okay, so just keep in mind that if the Dow uh, stays strong as the dollar gets weaker, and then we do have that confluence from the Fed pretty much saying like yeah we're going to start thinking about pivoting slowing down raising rates you're probably going to look at the dow eventually taking out all-time highs uh within 2023 whether that's in the first half or second half in the end it's going to probably happen uh, okay so next is smp 
So S&P trading within the bearish fair value gap. This is also showing signs of a, of a of a topping structure. Again, it's not a major topping structure. You know, it's just it's just a local topping structure. We'll see if it actually leads to a higher low from these lows down here or here, or it's just going to lead to the next phase down lower, which is also a possibility. And that's actually the more probable move for all these indexes because we are in a macro change of character for all of them. I do think that the Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ, though they're showing bullish activity now, they still have these macro levels they're likely going to get to, especially the S&P and NASDAQ. You know, both of them still haven't reached their COVID uh, pivot high prior to the lockdown drop, whereas the Dow actually has. It actually has and actually went lower than that level as well. So though the Dow's reached it, those two haven't. So I do think they're likely going to get there at some point, whether it's later in the uh, the year of 2023 or early. You know, it'll be very dependent on what the Fed stances are this coming week. That's why this is such an important week. And this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this market recap on a Sunday. So, you know, just look at the candles for both the Dow and now the S&P. I mean, they're telling me, look for some pull, look for some downside, you know, look for a minor pullback in the S&P um, to at least to at least challenge this trend line here. So this trend line here, actually I didn't mean to draw it that exact way, but you get my drift. So pretty much this trend line here, you know, which is gonna be respecting most of the price action, watch rate pull back towards this level here, okay? And then probably because of how steep it is, this will eventually break. And then you'll look for a stab into liquidity under these swing lows. So potentially this one here and then a pull up or all the way down towards this level here at. 3588 to 3600 but if we get towards 3600 and decisively lose it and start losing 3588 we're probably just going to continue the trend down to the red line here which is the covid swing high at 3394 or 3400 if you want to round it up so it's very likely if we're going to have a continuation up and take out the liquidity above this level here watch for a minor pullback into this fair value gap potentially even a stab under this liquid this uh wick to grab the liquidity and then continue higher but watch for this trend line to eventually break as well. That's definitely going to happen at some point. All right. And another reason why you could also be looking for a, a significant pullback back under this low is because what are you looking at when you see this here? So look, you have the left shoulder here, you have the potential head here. And if you do have that significant pullback under this level, you have a potential right shoulder for a larger move up to fill out the liquidity above this level here and potentially this level here. Okay. Next is NASDAQ. So NASDAQ, you know, very interesting, was able to break past the descending uh, channel once more, but is finding some, you know, I would say some significant resistance here, you know, un just under this, this uh, small consolidation here, small consolidation right here, and then under this consolidation here. So it's having some trouble here, but again, if it has a bullish pullback, it should hold the descending channel and also hold this fair value gap. Now the, the NASDAQ is not as clean as I would say the S&P and Dow. If this starts losing this fair value gap, it's gonna be very ugly looking. It'll be more in, t in, in line with a continuation of the downtrend back into the descending channel and pretty much coming back towards this low wick down here and taking it out. So I think it's very important the NASDAQ is able to hold this fair value gap as decent support, grabbing the liquidity under this level and should be enough and then breaking up again higher towards this higher green zone. If it can't do that, then it's going to get really ugly. Uh, the in, the inverse hand shoulder look won't really look that clean, won't really look like an inverse hand shoulders. I mean, you'll have the left here, you'll have potentially the head here, but it will be a janky right shoulder that I wouldn't even, there's not really a neckline. You know, it would have to come all the way up here first and then fail. So that's why it's very important for, it's really important for the NASDAQ to, to be able to have a move higher. You know, it really, it really is. But it, it, its move has to be really high. It, it honestly has to be all the way up towards this level over here and then a pullback. But we'll see. We'll see. Price action is rarely ever super clean. You'll get it sometimes. You kind of have to look for the, I would say, the spirit of a structure sometimes. Again, you'll get those clean structures here and there, but it's more important that you can interpret the spirit of the price action. I know that sounds kind of uh, kind of ridiculous, but you have to get the idea of what's being being painted. And uh, if you can do that, then most ugly price action won't fool you. It happens, no matter how much you trade, it happens. But if you can get the idea behind of what's being painted, then you're usually in a good place. All right, next is oil. We'll take a quick look at oil. 
So oil having that continuation down, we should see continuation to the downside coming down towards 75 bucks. We're very, very close. And then eventually towards the low side, the lower descending trend line here from this low pivot and, and, and further down. Because remember, this is off of a much larger bullish structure off of the monthly. So this descending trend line upside here and then the low one here, it's a much larger structure on the monthly and weekly. So we should see price get down there and relatively hold the zone there. Now, it doesn't have to hold it perfectly, but it should hold the zone sort of like you saw down here, right? You just get candles kind of oscillating around it. That will be fine as well. Because remember, because it's off the monthly, monthly is, you know, it, it really matters where the monthly closes. So, so within the daily, I mean, you have 30 candles within there. So that could be down here, it'll close and come back up. And that's all within one monthly candle. So it's okay if the daily starts breaking this level as long as it closes relatively near it on the monthly. All right, next is gold and silver. So looking at gold and silver, I mean, I really like how gold looks. I can't not be bullish on it. I think we are looking at a bullish retracement. Came into a bullish level. Now we'll see if there's enough. We'll see if there's actually enough uh, 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 liquidity here to actually break up higher and take out these highs. Potentially, I do see it coming lower, making a lower high around this zone here at about 1766 and potentially all the way 1770, breaking down again and then coming towards this lower fair value gap at about 1700 and then trying to hold this level. And then once we get towards this median fair value gap here, I think all bets are off. You're just looking for the continuation higher. Um, this looks absolutely fabulous for a, a, a really nice move back towards 1800 and potentially even higher going towards 1850. I really like how gold looks, very, very bullish. Silver, really respecting the structure overall, did pierce through it, but it did make a higher low as well. So we're gonna see if it's gonna get that continuation again. If gold is really, really bullish next week, I think silver, even though it's been lagging for most of the year for gold, will respect it and break up higher. I still think you're gonna see silver getting towards 22, $23. But if we do start breaking these lows, you're likely to, you're likely to fill out this whole fair value gap and coming towards this ascending trend line. And then it'll be very dependent on gold, you know, how powerful it looks as it comes lower. If that looks powerful, silver should hold this ascending trend line. But if gold does start to actually waver as it goes lower, really showing signs of weakening out, look for silver to lose this level. And then it'll be very very interesting to see what happens with silver. I think it'll be very difficult for it to actually create another bullish structure to, to build up past this and uh, break up higher I think then it's gonna be really really tied to this microphone structure it's in and potentially we may see a really really uh, steep drop going towards 17 and then potentially even lower towards the bottom end of that microphone structure but as long as it holds the higher lows that it's been making um, it should be well enough it should be well enough and it should be able to find the bullish impulse to go higher. But that all depends on gold as well. Because if gold starts to fail, silver will fail. All right, let's take a quick look at uh, Bitcoin, see what it's doing so far uh, on the weekend. So looking at Bitcoin, really respecting this descending trend line so far. I like how it looks. So what you're seeing here, you know, looking at the micro here, you have these two impulse candles up. And this looks like a, you know, somewhat of a bullish consolidation so kind of like a mini bear flag on the daily uh you know again very very early but if this does play out this should be enough to break through this descending trend line and then you'll probably look for a pullback after these high wicks are taken out so about 17,000 to 17,200 ish uh, and then a pullback from there and then it's going to be another attempt to change trends right so what you're going to be looking for if that happens you'll have the, the, the little break up here and then you'll have a pullback and now you're going to be looking okay where can we get that higher low right because the higher low is going to be extremely important if if it can stay above you know this consolidation is going to show real strength real momentum but as long as it stays above this low down here that's well enough okay so it can take this out and be okay but if it can close above that the momentum is very high because you're closing above a bullish consolidation it just implies that strong momentum to the upside strong velocity may be coming but even if it doesn't it's still bullish potentially as long as we get the closure above these these wicks and then the pullback stays above this low and if that should happen then we're looking for a, re a revisit 
to this fair value gap, which is also around the, the lows of this consolidation, right? So that's that would be the next step. We're still very early. We still are, you know, macro bearish on Bitcoin. And we also have to remember, you know, we are still in this technically this does have a bearish bias toward to it so we we can't really jump the gun here um so even if it does you know trade here and then it, it breaks down uh look for it to break lower now how it breaks down will be pretty interesting again it'll be very very uh ex very influenced uh, against like the s p and the dow um and the dollar but mainly the s p and dow um if they're coming down fairly slowly uh, Bitcoin should follow suit again, assuming we're not going to see any major bearish news coming out of crypto. But overall, I like how this looks. I also do think a lot of altcoins are showing potential for, for, for some nice upside. Um, so as long as that doesn't get darted away, I think we're going to see some nice green, at least early, uh, middle to end of next week. Um, early this week could be a pretty strong dollar. You, you might see dollar get back towards 107. Um, so that might lead to some pressure early in the week. Um, and then depending on how the news comes out, like I, w like I went over, uh, we'll define, you know, are we going to have a softer week and really a softer December and have some nice upside on these risk on assets? Or uh, are we going to have a, another red month that's going to be really just a, a, another leg down for not just crypto, but probably all of the markets? You know, so it's going to be a very interesting week. And this this first uh, this first week is going to define a lot, a lot of what's going to happen this month and really the next two, three months. So looking forward to it. And uh, I hope I uh, hope you all are as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for this uh, this special market recap on the weekend. If uh, if you have any questions, make sure you ask me in the Discord. The best way to get in contact with me contact with me is on the Discord. And um, if you are interested in any of my services, uh, make sure to check them out. Especially the tutoring service. You know, I, I I know it's a bit pricey. I do have it on a sale. I usually have it at three hundred dollars a month. Uh, you get four sessions for that. Um, but right now I have a thirty percent sale, so it's down to two ten a month. Uh, you know, for the holidays, happy holidays, everyone, Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, because uh, I, I do think that, you know, I, I love that people follow the trades. I love that I've gotten great messages saying people have been doing great on the trades. I mean, we haven't really lost one, but it, I, I would really love for people to learn how to do it themselves because, you know, I, I would like, my dream would be that you don't have to pay me to follow the trades. Even though it's only $15 a month, I would rather you keep that $15 and then do it yourself. You know, so, like it's much better and I'm not going to be here forever. You know, no one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. So if you can do it yourself, it's a skill that's great to have. Um, and uh, the way I do it is a very relaxing and proven to work way. Uh, just go through my trade history. I'm as transparent as I possibly can. I give you every trade I've taken um, on the Discord. And, you know, quickly I'll, uh, you know, actually I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a separate video on it. But um, but yeah, I, I actually no, you know, we'll go. Yeah. So looking looking at the at the Discord, you know, I just want to make sure everyone's clear on how this looks. You know, you can always go through my closed positions, things I've gone through in the month. Like so far in stocks, it's been absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous on the, on the month. And then for crypto, again, another great month so far. You can see the open stock trades and the open crypto trades. So, you know, going to the open stock trades, you can see what I'm in, how much I have currently exposed on my account to this specific asset when I got in it originally and what my current average price is, how much of my account is currently exposed overall. Same thing with the crypto. So make sure, guys, you know, just if you're following the trades or you're looking to follow the trades, if you're looking to join the service, you know, reference these, um, reference these rooms. And uh, if you want to learn how I trade, uh, make sure to check out the uh, Patreon link to uh, become a lemon lover. That's the tier. And uh, yeah, again, we're in that we're in, we're in that deal right now, to where it's going to be uh, about two ten a month for just uh just the week so until december 2nd really right so once december 2nd passes it's going to go back to 300 dollars a month so if you're interested in learning from me now's the best time and uh, make sure to ask questions to people who who are in the tutoring service or who have been and uh dm them see if they like it if, if not then uh then you know not to use it and uh make sure to ask me questions about it, okay everyone all right everyone that's it i uh, hope you're having a great weekend and uh we'll talk soon as we go into next week Everyone remember, be patient, be vigilant, and be nimble. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.